to another tutorial. In this tutorial I'll be showing you how to make a custom NPC. Uh, this is my second attempt at this because the first time I made a mistake and I also thought I talked a little bit fast so I'll probably try to slow it down and try to explain things a bit better because obviously people who don't know how to do this probably don't know how to follow as quick as I can do it so I think I'm going a little bit too fast. But anyway this will be on how to create a custom NPC. So first of all you need to get the items that you want your NPC to be wearing. So for this example we'll make a character that looks like this in full dragon. So if you just equip all your items that will how that's how your NPC will look at the end. Doesn't matter if all if you have some empty uh, inventory slots because we can just replace that with negative ones which is null which means nothing uh, but we can do that a bit later on so don't worry about that. So first of all you need to get your uh, item IDs, every single one of them. Uh, I've already got that right here but a way to do that is you go in game push semicolon semicolon item in if you're on the Polonizer's project source and then just do dragon full helm and it will give you the item in your inventory and tell you the item ID. Another way to do it is to go onto rune server and look at some sort of item ID list and search for the item you want. But either way, just get the item ID that you need or you want for your custom NPC and you should be alright. Okay, so after you have all the items you want, uh, open up your project source and you need to first of all shut down your server. So type in game, do shutdown 10, or just close run.cmd, it doesn't really make any difference. Go into data, and then into cache, well then back out of cache I mean, and then go cop right click cache, copy, paste. Because you want to make a backup of your cache, or quiche, or whatever the hell you want to call it, cache. Uh, I just call it cache, so yeah. But you want to make a backup just in case you make a stuff up, and also if your server is running, then anything that you try put into the cache, won't save because the server is using the cache so it doesn't save if that makes sense. It's like it's like when you try to delete an item that's in use it says Windows cannot delete this because the item is in use. That's sort of the same principle but with the cache. Cache, 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 blah blah blah. Anyway, after you've backed up your cache go into extras if you're on the Polonizer project source or use any method of getting an item's model ID. So for this example we'll be using Frosty's cache editor. So in Polonizer project source go into extras into tools and then open up Frosty's cache editor and run it. You should get this box here. Now first of all you have to load which cache you're going to be editing. So we'll go file, load cache and find the path or the, where your location of where your source is. So there's mine on the desktop. Then go data and then use the cache that you made a copy of. Alright, after you've loaded that click this box, select items and then click submit. And now you need to find every uh, item, well find an item ID that you're going to use first. So we're going to find the helm first, so that's item ID 11335. So in the item selection list type 11335 I think it was, yep. Then you'll see that we are on the dragon full helm. Make sure you've selected the non-noted version, as the noted version won't work. So select the item you want, then click edit, and this will come up. This is pretty much all the details of that item, so the name, price, uh, the team, stackable equipment slot, all that kind of stuff. We want the model tab, which is the second one, and you want to just grab the mail equip one item ID, or the model ID. This a number is the uh, model ID for that item, so it was the male model for Dragon Full Helm. Obviously if you want to make a female character you would use the female equip one, but for this example we'll be making a male one, so just grab the male one which is 26632. Go back to your notepad, I suggest you have a notepad with all your item IDs. Next to your helm, add in that number so you just remember it, and then just do the rest for everything else. So for the body, 14479, you can close this, go back to the top to start again, then go 14479, and do the dragon plate body, click it, make sure it's the unnoted one, edit, model, mail equip, grab that number, and paste it back into your notepad next to the body. Repeat the steps for everything else, and I'll get back to you when I've done Alright, so after you've done that, uh, after you've gotten every single model ID, that's it, and that's good, you can close the item editor, and now it's time to make your custom NPC. So don't close this tool selection yet, click this, go down to NPCs, as we're going to be editing NPCs now, and click submit. Now you need to try and make an NPC that hasn't already been made, because you obviously don't want to overwrite one. So if you scroll to the bottom, you should see a hundred, like heaps of nulls. Your cache might not have all these nulls, it all depends. But just go to whereabouts uh, your last NPC is. So if mine is 17178 for the Polonizer project. Um, and then get the next NPC in that list. 
this is 17179, as you can see it's a null. And you just want to remember that number, 17179, click delete to delete that NPC, then go up to an NPC that's already made, obviously I'm going to use this one as it's just easier, um, but it's, if you want to make a custom one or just like from the scratch, just use a man, so if you don't have all these custom NPCs already, click duplicate, enter the IP NPC ID, which was 17179, click OK, and then this should pop up. This is all the details for your new NPC. Obviously, we're going to change the name to our custom NPC. We're on the combat level, let's just make it 101, just because. NPC size, That's I'm pretty sure that's the click radius. So if you look in game, as you can see in game, this is Jad, as for example. As you can see, Jad is a lot bigger than a normal player, so the size to click is a lot larger. This is about, like, I don't know, 3 by 3 tiles, maybe compared to a normal human which is only like two tiles I'm pretty sure that's what the NPC size is but you can figure that out yourself NPC height by default I think is 128 and that's the same size as this like sort of character but if you go to see 1717 uh, 17178 I think it is no nope. 17168 no nope. 58 hang on yeah, so as you can see, this is the large polonizer. He is a lot larger than a normal person. If you want to make him larger, we'll change this. So for example, we're going to do 300 to make him large. I don't really know what the exact scale is, but you can just figure that out yourself. Respawn direction, I guess it's just which direction he respawns. Render animation is a remote. So if you want to change your remote, go in game and do remote and then a number. So for example, we're going to do 300, which is just this render remote. So we'll chuck in 300. Alright, and after that's done, click the model tab. Now, you should see this, or something like this, which will be a lot of numbers and then possibly some negative ones. What that pretty much means is each one is a slot for your model. So as you see in your inventory tab, you have 12 slots. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Each number represents a certain slot, so obviously your character can only have 12. So to start off with, we'll use the 12 negative ones so it means nothing on everything and then what you want to do is just grab the model IDs and replace the negative ones with the IDs that you got from the list what this will do is it will add the character model or the item model I mean onto your character instead of having nothing uh, you need to make sure all slots is full even if it's just with a negative one or else it will give you an error so that's why you start off normally with the 12 negative ones and after that's done make sure you've got all the right things so five items one two three, four, five, yep, then grab that, copy it, and replace it, replace the models that are currently in there with the ones that you edited, if that makes sense. Chat heads, you probably don't really need to worry about, because obviously it's just chat head. Options, this is how you change the options, whether you want it to be attackable, or talk to, or tradable. Obviously you can't put attack in here, if you put attack in here, the attack is just talk, as these are all handled differently. I'm pretty sure this is like click one, click two, click 3, click 4, click 5, which you'll know what that means. I'm pretty sure if you look in npchandler.java, that's how you like handle shops, click 1, click 2, that sort of stuff. Um, pretty much that's how you edit things. After you've done that, click File, Save, and check your console. If it doesn't say any errors, then it means you're good. So then close that. You can then close the NPC selection, close the console and Frosty's cache editor, and then you just need to restart your server. So go back in game, go shut down, 10 seconds, or either way, just close run CMD. Now remember we edited the cache that we backed up, so you need to go back into data, rename your original case, uh, cache just as a new backup, and then rename your backup to cache so the server runs that one instead. Hopefully that made sense. Then go back, run your server. When you try to log in, it shouldn't let you, it'll say there'll be an update, please, re please reload your client. If it says that, then you know you've done it right. So just rerun your client log back in and it should be working now remember the ID that you set the NPC to so ours was 17179 I believe or something like that and then you just need to spawn that so once you've loaded in go NPC 17179 move out of the way and there's our new custom NPC as you can see he's larger than us because the original uh, character or NPC size is a 128 and 128 and we did 300 300 He's obviously standing different to us and turning, that's because his render remote is 300, not negative 1, or whatever the default one is. 
Uh, and that's pretty much it. As you can see, right click it, our custom NPC, level 101, talk to an attack. If you attack him, he'll have only default health and no attack animation. Since if you want him to have drops attack animation, you need to make a combat script, give him bonuses, and set a click one to his dialogue if you want him to have a dialogue. I'm pretty sure I explained most of the combat script and uh, bonuses in another video. So that's pretty much how you make a custom NPC. And hopefully that helps you. You can do that with any NPC as well. So just go hard. You can have any model on there as well. So if you want, you could make a moving altar with a sword or something. Just be creative. And I'll first of all, actually I'll show you how to get some models first. So that's pretty much the end of the tutorial. So if all you want to do is make a custom NPC, you can close this now. But another handy tool is in the Polonizer project source, and you can also download this because I did not make it, uh, is a thing called RS Data Suite, version 1.2.2, but the version doesn't really matter, I don't think. So what, oh yeah, what you need to do is you need to open up and you'll find this interface, click load cache, and then go to your source, and then go data, load your cache, you can load the one that's running, it doesn't really make a difference this time because you're not editing anything. Then once it loads, these buttons will become uh, active, you just want to click models and then this will have every single model ID so model ID 0 is whatever this is, you can click the screen to try, uh, move it around some sort of floor tile model ID 2 is another one, model ID 3 is something else something else, something else, and if you scroll to the bottom you'll find the customs that we've added or any people have added so it's all the different models and pretty much if you go back onto your list and you grab a model ID, so 5024 I bet you this will be dragon legs so we type 5024, and what do you know? Here's the model for dragon legs. So as you can see, the two numbers tie up. This is basically just a way to view all the models that are in your cache in a visual way without having to implement them in game. So say, for example, you wanted to find something, you can just scroll through this. And that's also a way you can add, um, it's also a way you can add the old item look without actually having the command. You just edit the current items model, and then you find the old current, uh, old items model in this, uh, data suite and then you replace that ID with the new model if that makes sense. So basically you just edit the use Frosty's cache editor to edit the item replace the model with the old model's ID and save it and that's how you get the old look for the items without having to use a command which is just sort of the easy way of doing it if you prefer that look because most likely every single model will be in here so yeah there's the mystic I don't even know if mystic has changed I don't remember but I can check item in Mystic robe top is it? Yeah, so as you can see Mystic has changed Looks a little bit stupid now, so you could replace that item ID with 5035 That's the female ones obviously the male ones will possibly be around. Yeah, so there's the male ones I think and obviously as you can see the arms and the shirt are different, but you just need to add that instead So for example you do the shirt and then you do the arms and that's pretty much how you do it But obviously with the item as well you can have two models so for an item you could have 5028 and then do a semicolon to separate it. So it would be 5028 and you separate it, meaning that's the end of that. And you could do a second model which is 5029 and that would be the shirt. Oops, didn't mean to do the one. Then do another semicolon and that would be the shirt and the arms. And obviously the gloves are sep something different. But that's basically how you do it. So hopefully that helped you. Hopefully that understand. Hopefully you understand that made a few mistakes but whatever we good enough I'm not going to do it another time and thank you for watching